Good morning. Welcome to our program, Finding Christmas Under the Sea. Uh, these kids have done a great job because a couple of them have to shift a bunch of parts because, as you know, in Valley City, we got a lot of sickness in our schools. So props to them. And I hope you enjoy our different take on the Christmas program. We are under the sea. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He put many creatures on the earth, on the land, and in the sky, and deep below the sea. As you and I know, he put people up on the land and not under the water. And the story you're about to see took place completely on dry land. But the funny thing happened as we were getting ready for Christmas. All of our scripts fell off boat and sank to the bottom of the ocean. It is there that we begin our tale, as this Christmas we search for Jesus under the sea. God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled by, this, by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great, and you will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. This kingdom will never end. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. Ah, what a glorious day under the waves. The sun is shining through the deep waters. The anemones are bright and colorful. In just a few months, I'll marry the cutest clownfish in the whole sea. Greetings. Whoa. Whoa, where did you come from? Who are you? I am an angelfish. An angelfish? But angelfish only come from heaven. That means if I'm seeing an angelfish then, oh no, I'm dead. No, Mary. I was so young. I had so much to live for. Mary, don't be, do not be afraid. You aren't dead. I'm not? I, I bring you a message from the Lord. You are highly favored among all the fish in the sea, and the Lord has chosen you for a special flame. What does he want from me? Mary, you're going to have a baby, and you'll name him Jesus. A baby, but that's not possible. I'm not even married yet, and the wedding is months away. Mary, this is no ordinary child. He will be conceived by the Holy Spirit, and he will be the Son of God, the Messiah. The Messiah. I know, I know it sounds incredible but nothing is impossible with God then let it happen as you have said I'm the Lord's servant if he wants me to be mother to his son I am willing the son of God the Messiah wow for many hundreds of years God's people had waited for the Messiah God promised that the Messiah would be their hero their Savior Jesus would do more than save his people. He came to save the world.
This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to, to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Come on, seahorse, we have a long ride ahead of us. Oh, I can't believe Caesar's making us travel to your hometown for this sentence. It'll be okay. We'll get there by night. We'll find a nice, comfortable room at an inn. It will be a nice place for the Emmanuel to be born. Jesus. His name is going to be Jesus. Really? I thought the angelfish said something about his name being the Emmanuel. But I like Jesus. Are we all set? Ready when you are. Joseph? Hmm. I just want to thank you again for not leaving me when you found out about the baby. I know you weren't happy and you didn't believe me at first. What changed your mind? Same thing happened to me that happened to you. I saw an angelfish. You did? I was so scared when I saw the angelfish. I thought maybe I was dead. That's so funny. I thought the same thing. The angelfish said, don't be afraid. The baby is the son of God. You should marry Mary right away and help her raise him. I was not going to argue with an angelfish. Oh, Joseph, that makes me so happy. When God calls us, we have to answer him. I didn't choose this, and neither did you. But we're going to raise this boy the best we can. That's why God had that's what God had in mind in us. Obeying God can be scary. Sometimes he asks us to do things that frighten us or even embarrass us. But when we are faithful to God, we can do great things. God used Mary and Joseph to raise the boy who would become the savior of the world. God may not send an angel fish to you, but he will give us all something exciting that we can do for his kingdom. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that, cens that census would, should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, the Bethle to Bethlehem to the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Gilbert. Yes, Story. Did I just see a man checking into the ceramic castle out back? Um, yes, you did. Gil, why is that man sleeping in the castle? If you haven't heard, Dory, there is no room in the Reef. No room in the Reef? The Four Seas Inn is sold out. Thank you very much, Caesar Augustus. Matter of fact, there's not a room to be had any place in Bethlehem. So you made, so you, so you put a man in the ceramic castle? Yep. I can't believe you. Why didn't you just stash him in the ceramic cave? Because I can't. Oh, you can put a man in the ceramic castle, but not in a cave? There's already someone in the cave. Who? Oh, just a young couple. A couple? Yeah, a clownfish from Nazareth and his pregnant wife. Pregnant? And she's pregnant? Yeah. And you made her sleep in the ceramic cave. What was I supposed to do? Kick someone else out of their room? Gil, the woman is about to have a baby. She can't sleep in the ceramic cave. There's no room in the inn. Maybe we should make one. Maybe you could give up your room. You mean our room? I mean the corner of the reef you call your shrimp man cave. My movie room? I'm going to get that couple and move them in now. No! I just hope I can get there before. 
What, what's that noise? Do you, do you hear that? What is that? Gil, I think it's a baby. <laughs> Jesus wasn't born in a palace, a hospital, or even a rented room. Jesus was born in a stable in Bethlehem, far, far from his parents' hometown and very, very far away from his home in heaven. Jesus came not as our warrior or as a king, but as a baby, so that we would not be afraid to come to him and know him as our savior. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth. Peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. My feet are wet. You're in the ocean, of course your feet are wet. My shell itches. Scratch it. My claws are sore. Jed, why are you complaining so much? Because I'm, I'm a crab, I'm crabby. Can you keep it down a little bit? You're starting to scare the jellyfish. Jellyfish? Why did I have to get a job hurting jellyfish? They're weird looking and they've got those stingers. They hurt. I know they do, Jed. I'm just saying, can't you look at the bright side of things? The bright side? What bright side? We're on the bottom of the ocean. It could be worse. How? We could be humans living on land, sleeping out in fields, hurting sheep all night. You're right. Maybe it's not so bad being a crab. Those guys have it tough. It's dirty, it's cold. They have to watch out for wolves. And jellyfish are a lot, a lot smarter than sheep. Jed, sea anemones are smarter than sheep. I guess it's not so bad in here. The jellyfish are quiet tonight. The water qu is quiet. The water is quiet tonight. It's going to be a nice, peaceful, quiet night. Greetings. Ah! afraid. Easy for you to say. I bring you I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the oceans today in the coral reef of Bethlehem. A Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. Goodwill to fish, crabs, and sharks and octopi and everyone I left out. Jed, did you just see what I saw? I don't know. Did you just see an angel who's saying, do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the oceans. Today in the coral reef of Bethlehem, a savior has been born to you. He's the Messiah, the Lord. Glory to you, God, in the highest and peace on earth. Good will to fish and crabs and sharks and octopi and every and everyone I left out. Yep. <laughs> then yes, I did. Come on, Jed, we need to get to the coral reef and see this thing the Lord made known to us. Can we do that? What about the jellyfish? <coughs> Works for me. Did the jelly, wait, did the jellyfish just talk? Come on, Jed. God could have announced the birth of Jesus anywhere to anyone he wanted. So why did he choose to come lowly, poor shepherds? Because Jesus came for everyone. 
Jesus came for rich and poor, humble and proud, royal and common folk. The angel's invitation is for all of us. Come and see what the God has done. Come and meet the Messiah. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. <clears throat> and they, all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Barnacles for thoughts. I was just thinking about my cousin Elizabeth. A few months ago, she gave birth to her first son, John. Her husband didn't say a word for the nine months she was pregnant, and as soon as the baby was born, she, he spoke again, saying that their son, John, would be a prophet. It was so strange. That is strange. No, that was a little odd. Having a baby in a ceramic aquarium cave outside the coral reef is strange. Having a couple of crabs come visit us and worship the baby because an angelfish came and told them to come see our baby. That is strange. I didn't expect any of this when the angel fish came to me, but I never thought I'd have an angel fish tell me I was going to become a dad either. What do you think he will do? Who do you think he will be? Will he be smarter than us? Will he be kinder than us? Will his younger brother and sister get mad at us when I tell them why can't you be like your, like your brother Jesus? I'm afraid to say something like that. They can turn around and say, I don't know, Mom. Why can't you be more like Jesus? Is this really God's son? How am I supposed to be his dad? He should be my dad. He should be the one answering my questions. Shh, he's sleeping. He's just a baby right now, Joseph. Let him sleep. Maybe let me get some sleep too. You're right. Good night, Mary. Good night. Mary and Joseph had no idea what Jesus would do for them. They only knew that God had chosen them for a special purpose, just as he chose all of us. We don't need to have all the answers. We just need to have a heart that's willing to obey. Mary had a heart, so did Joseph, and so did their son Jesus. Please turn to page 281 in songbooks to join us for Silent Night.
After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, among the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod appeared, this he was disturbed, and all the Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chiefs, priests, and the teachers of the law, he asked them, Where is the Messiah was to be born? In Bethlehem and in Judea, they replied, for this was what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Ju Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people to Israel. When Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time of the star had appeared, he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I may go and worship him. Well, boys, if you swim in that direction, take a left on the shipwreck, you'll come right to the coral reef of Bethlehem. Thanks for everything, King Herod. Yes, thank you again. You're welcome, you're welcome. And remember, come back and tell me when you find him. I wanna go and kill him for myself. Kill him? Did I say kill him? I meant worship, worship him for myself. Oh, okay. Goodbye, goodbye boys, safe journey. Later, King, boy, what a nice shark. He was nice, wasn't he? What did you bo boys get for the baby? I got him some frankincense. I bought gold. Gold, frankincense? This is a baby, you guys. Didn't either one of you get him a blanket or teething ring or even a onesie? Well, what did you get him? I got him some myrrh. Myrrh? He is a king. That's a gift for a king. So is gold and so is frankincense. Wow, we really are going to see him, just like the starfish told us. Yes, but we need to hurry if we want to reach the coral reef by nightfall. Let's get moving. Where are the whales? Saddle up, boys. It's time to swim to Bethlehem. The wise men had waited a long time for a sign. When they saw the star in the sky, they knew why it had come. They traveled from afar, bearing gifts to see the newborn king. Wise men still seek him at Christmas and every day of the year. They know there is only one king over all the earth, and that is Jesus.
had heard the king, the wise men went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. That angel fishes, fishes everywhere, isn't he? Must get some good frequent flyer miles. I sure am glad he warned us about Herod. It just goes to show you never trust a shark. We saw him, guys. We saw the Messiah. Isn't that exciting? I want to run and tell someone. I want to tell everyone what we've seen. Hey, look, turtles, let's tell them. Hey, look, crabs, let's tell them. Hey, turtles, we have something to tell you. No, we have something to tell you. Trust me, ours is way more important. Trust me, ours is more important. No way. Yes way. All right, all right. Let's do it this way. I, I'll count to three, and we'll say it together. Ready? One, two, three. We, we just, just saw the, the newborn king. king. You, you saw him, him too? too? Yes, yes, we did. did. Wait, Wait, are we all saying, saying the same thing? thing? Rubber baby buggy bumpers. That's, That's so cool. So you saw the baby Jesus? Yes, we did. A starfish came and told us he had been born. Really? We heard it from an angelfish. No kidding. An angelfish told us to take a different route home so the king can't harm him. This is amazing. It just goes to show you that this baby is no ordinary baby. He is going to be our king. The kingfish? Wait, what is this? Where are we? The kingfish of kingfish. I can't wait to see what he will do. I'm just glad he came. This world could use a savior. And we need to tell the whole world that Jesus has come to save us. Christ has come and Christ has saved us from our sins. The, miss, the mission he began and Christmas came to finish on Easter. Now it's up to us to make sure the whole world. You mean the whole ocean? Yes, the whole ocean needs to know that Jesus has come. Me.
Well, our story is at an end, but the story of Christmas is just beginning. Every year we celebrate this day to remind ourselves of how this story began. God sent Jesus to save us from our sins. If we believe in Jesus, we will be saved. This year, remember the story of the clownfish who obeyed God's call. Remember the crabs and the turtles who searched the sea for their savior. And remember to tell everyone that Jesus is, Jesus is the kingfish of kingfish and the Lord of lords, the savior of the world. Thank you for all coming and enjoying our Christmas program. Uh, thank you to the teachers that definitely helped. Brenda, Amanda, Angela, Jess, Abby, Alyssa, Ellie, Cassidy, and Audrey. And thank you to Amy for stepping in at the last minute to play piano. She did awesome. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and thank you to Julie for doing the programs for us. And lastly, thank you to Thrivent for the action team to get us all these wonderful costumes for the kids. Uh, we hope you all have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year. Good job, guys. You can pick up your children back in their classrooms. They're going to take off their costumes, and then they are yours to go. So thank you. Have a wonderful Christmas. <laughs>